All right, so I have <laughs> I have recorded this video uh, for this to this day's uh, five minutes with scripture. Now this is this is time number three, uh, and in my head I've recorded it about another seven times uh, because this passage um i struggle with it not 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 to communicate well okay i do struggle to communicate it not because uh there's some unusual or weird you know debate about this um it's it's because this this uh particular set of passages in first john chapter four really shines a light on myself um and i, I think it shines a light on the church as well, and it's it's a really it's a good light, but it's also a bit of a convicting light, um, because it. Well, let me read the verses, and then I'll I'll tell you why I struggle with this. Starting in verse seven of First John four, dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. And this is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. This is love, not that we loved God, but he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. So um, the, 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 here's the part that I struggle with. Uh, I don't think I do a very good job of, of sharing love. Um... I find myself impatient with people. I find myself getting irritated with people. Um, I find myself frustrated with the choices that people make a lot of times. And, and I find myself as a result of that being uncaring at times. So when I do my own litmus test in these verses, I, I don't like the result that comes from it, you know, because I'm supposed to love one another. See, the thing about love, we talk about all the different attributes of love. Um, and, and, and nowhere in scripture does it say love is argumentative, <laughs> but that's, that's my bet. Um, nowhere does it say that, that I get to pick and choose who I love. It doesn't say that. Um, it, it doesn't say that I get to love at my convenience. It, it doesn't get to say these things. We, we, and John says this in verse 10, he says, this is love. See, I, I don't think we really understand, and I know I don't really understand the love of God. I try to, and thanks to the Holy Spirit, I get closer towards it every single day. But it's not something that comes naturally to me, and it doesn't come to us naturally. Uh, our, our love is, is, is sacrificial. And that is what John says here when he says, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice. See, love above all things is sacrificial. It, it considers others before it considers ourself. And that's not our bent. So one of the reasons I've recorded this thing several times is because I struggle with how to not bring politics into this conversation. Uh, because politics over the past six years really has come to a head. But if we're being really looking at students of history, we recognize that politics for the last really 30 years has has created more and more division i mean the, the the 90s was extremely divisive when it came to politics all these different things are coming up and and as we draw lines in the sand to decide our political bent oftentimes we look at the other side as the enemy or as unlovable as deplorable as as whatever word you want to use and that goes contrary to these passages See, we're not commanded to love people based on our own preferences, uh, whether, whether uh, you know, whatever our opinion on mask wearing is and whatever another person's opinion on mask wearing is. We're not allowed to not love them because of that choice. We're not allowed to not love them based on their opinion on vaccines. We're not allowed to not love them based on their political bent. But that's where we are. That's where I find myself, if I'm not careful, going sometimes. And it's 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 hard. This is why this scripture was so hard to talk about. Is because God's love is a sacrificial love. God's love is a love that laid down his life. So we also ought to love one another. And this is verse 12. This is, this is kind of the crux of it. 
No one's ever seen God. See, you remember if you go back to the Old Testament, you know, Moses, you know, the presence of God, just being in the mere presence of God caused Moses' face to glow. Uh, uh, Elijah wanted to see the presence of God and God said, no, nah, I'm, I'm in the wind, but you can't really be close to me. When, when, when God put his hand and covered Moses so that Moses could, he could not die. I mean, seeing the face of God was, was so holy that, that it, we couldn't handle it. Um, so no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, this is what John implies, that God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. And then people can catch a glimpse of God through our love. And that's the litmus test. If we're loving the way that we're supposed to, then people should see God in us. People should see the love of God within us that's being made complete in us. And I will tell you that I don't always do the best job of that. Uh, so my encouragement to you is do your own litmus test on this passage. See where you land. Take an honest look at it and see, hey, is this an area that, that I need to maybe work on? And what aspects in particular of loving others is it that I need to grow in? Okay, tomorrow we'll continue starting in verse 13.